Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to take you through something I built about 12-18 months ago and that is this case here. Now it all started when I bought my Inspire 1 and I was looking for a multi-charger to be able to charge all of the batteries at the same time. However all that was available at the time was the cheap XY charger which didn't actually work properly and the SPC and I found that to be ridiculously expensive. So what I thought was you know what why not build my own and whilst I was at it I was going to build in some of the features that I really needed. Things like charging to storage voltage because there's nothing worse than having to stand there and wait for your batteries to get to roughly halfway to turn them off if you're not going to be flying with them. So over the past 18 months this charger has evolved and it now supports the Inspire 2 as well as Crystal Sky charging as well. So what I'm going to do is take you through it, show you what I've built, what I've done and in the description for this video I'm also going to put some files and information as well if you want to build your own. So quickly looking around the case itself, it is a standard cheap storage case. It's not one of the expensive ones. I would have loved to have put it in one of the really hard plastic ones, but at the time the budget just didn't allow it. Obviously I've got the handle, the latches, and then on this side here is a hole with a fan to give it some airflow. Moving around to the back, you will see an additional few extra holes that I have managed to drill in a completely random place. That is to give some airflow into the case as well. So the way it works is it draws air in at the back, through the case and out at the side over there to give airflow over the power supplies. Looking inside the case you will find all of the charging ports and I'll show you these now a little bit closer. Looking inside on the top left you have the usual power connector which takes a standard three pin kettle lead. In the middle I fitted an LCD screen. Now this screen is one of those cheap standard ones which will allow you to hook it up to a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino and you program it via that. And this will currently show the battery charge voltages. It shows them in 1, 2, 3, 4 so I can monitor how each of the batteries are charging as it goes along. Moving over, I then have the standard Crystal Sky base. This allows me to charge the CS and Syndense batteries, and it also uses the standard DJI remote controller charge connector, and this cable does have some spear on it, so I can plug in a remote to charge if I really want to. This one is hooked up to that final battery slot over there, so if I was charging the Crystal Sky batteries at the same time as all of these batteries, that end one would take slightly longer to charge. Next to that I then have a 2 amp USB port for charging things like my iPad mini, my iPhone and whatever else USB devices I might want to charge like the remote controller on the Mavic Air for instance. Along the bottom you can see each of the charge slots for the DJI batteries. Now these are 3D printed, I designed them myself and they are designed to take the TB50 for the Inspire 2. I did originally have some in there for the DJI Inspire 1 pack, the TB47 and 48. However, I recently modified the case because I've no longer got the Inspire, I've only got the Inspire 2. The connectors are the ones I have taken out of the RC charge cable that DJI sell. Now these are heavily modified, I've had to remove the circuitry off them and then solder the wiring onto them to allow me to connect into the TB50 pack. However, the base for each of these connectors did start as the charge cable from the remote to the TB50 battery, which costs about 10 quid, I think it is in the UK. Along the top, you will then see a switch. This tells the charger to whether to charge to full or only 50% capacity because one of the big features that I wanted was the ability to put the batteries on charge and let them halfway charge if I'm not going to use them again for the next day or the day after. So when the switch is in the up position the battery will fully charge and when the switch is in the down position it will only charge the pack to put around 55-60%. This storage charge mode is all connected to an Arduino inside and is all hooked up to the LCD screen and that is what measures the pack voltages as well as gives me the ability to only charge to 50%. 
You might wonder why there is a cutout on each side of these and that is simply to allow me to see the voltage position on the side of the battery when it's in charging because one thing I noticed was when I put the batteries in I wasn't then able to see those lights as the batteries were charging and it was going along and whilst you do get info on the screen it's just handy to be able to see the lights on there as well. To place the battery in you simply grab the pack and place it in the top of the charger just like that and charging will begin automatically. Let's have a look at it in use. Okay, so to demonstrate this in use, you would first of all turn it on and allow it to boot up. Now it takes about 30 seconds to get fully fired up with the Arduino and everything get up and running. Something to note is each of the four slots is independent. So they are not in series or paralleled. They are four independent six amp power supplies. So it will also charge the batteries a bit quicker than the standard DJI charger does as well. Once it's booted, it goes over to show you the four voltages of each power supply. Now, that shows that because there is no battery connected, they're currently sitting at about 26.2, 26.3, which is their unloaded charge voltage. When you put a pack in, you simply take it, drop it into the slot, the battery will begin charging, and you can see that the voltage on slot 1 has dropped down now to 23.5 volt. If I place another pack in the end one, you will then see slot 4 kick in as well, down to 26.3, and then, sorry, 23.6, and you can then see the lights flashing on the side of that one as well as it begins to charge. If I wanted to set it to stop at 50% charge, it will then kick the switch over. As it reads the voltage and as it gets to the position that the pack is at half charge, it will then switch it off automatically. Now the way this works is through a resistor measuring bank and an Arduino. So each battery is connected into the charger but it is also looped into a resistor bank and then the Arduino itself. And the Arduino is looking for a specific voltage to shut the pack down at. Now off the top of my head I can't actually remember what I set this to and it does take a little bit of tweaking to get it right but you have a resistor dropper bank to get it down to between 0 and 5 volt in the Arduino and then that shows it as a reflection of the voltage on the display on the charger. Next I'm going to take you through the horrors that lie beneath the top and I'm going to be completely honest this has always been a work in progress it was never designed to look pretty it was only ever designed to be functional as you will find out shortly. Okay, I've lifted the lid on Frankenstein and as you can see it may look a total mess and the reality is it probably is and I've never really sat down and had the chance to tidy it all up and make it look as it is. To explain what we have, okay, in the base you have four 30 volt 6 amp power supplies. Now these adjustable voltage that have allowed me to take them down to roughly 26.3 and you don't really want to go much over 26.3 for charging DJI batteries, the 6S ones I should say. In my experience that's the absolute sweet spot especially with the Inspire 1 batteries. The TB48 is massively temperamental on charge voltage. Um, so you've got your four power supplies in the bottom. Over here then I've just got a small regulator that powers a normal PC fan. You might wonder what these holes are for along here. Well originally when I built this for the Inspire 1 the battery actually came through the top and into the base. With the modification I have made for the Inspire 2, obviously those slots are no longer needed and they're covered over. What you can see though is the bottom of my 3D printed brackets with the wires soldered onto the boards. Now as I said, those boards were the original charge boards for charging your remote controller from the TB50 battery. What I've done to them is stripped them out of the wiring, removed all of the circuitry and basically just turned it into a giant connector. I needed four to do it, it cost me about 40 quid but it was about the easiest way of doing it with this charger. Down here you have the 2 amp USB power supply and that is simply a off the shelf cheap eBay job which is hooked up to one of the PSUs and then there is a USB extension cable with the port that goes to the top of the charger from there. Over here is the programmed Arduino that does all of the control for the charging to storage capacity. So you've got a 
custom board, which is a total mess if I'm honest, but you've got a voltage regulator, you've got the Arduino itself, which is programmed, a second low voltage voltage regulator over here, and then you've got a switched relay board here. The way it basically works is the voltage comes into this section of the board here and through this little resistor bank that you can just see showing. The resistor bank is then connected to a port on the Arduino and the Arduino is looking for the correct voltage to be able to switch the packs off. Now this can only do it from a rising voltage so as the voltage comes up to a point it will switch off. I haven't programmed it or I haven't set it up yet to be able to measure it as it comes down however that is something I'm going to do in the next version. You then have a switch which turns the option on and off and that switch simply goes into the Arduino and it's basically like an interrupt so if the switch is in one position do nothing if the switch is in this position only charge to 50% capacity when the voltage gets the correct amount the Arduino simply tells the relay to switch off now the relays are in the current position of normally connected and then the Arduino changes them to disconnect and then it shuts the voltage off to the battery because the voltage then gets shut off, the power supply voltage rises quickly to above the charging voltage and then the relay still remains off. One of the problems I am going to come across is when I do set it to do come down to that level for discharging, I need to be able to tell it to actually if it's in this range rather than say if it's above this turn off as I've got it currently programmed. Overall, the charger is quite basic in the sense of it is simply four power supplies with an Arduino that connects to a relay board which connects to the batteries. The Arduino measures the voltage. As long as, alongside measuring the voltage, it also provides that voltage output to the LCD display through that little hole down there. Overall, I just wanted to show you guys what I had done with this. And if you are looking to build your own charger, this may give you some ideas. Certainly, if you're going to try and do it, do it a lot tidier than I have. Um, this is functional, but it absolutely works. You might wonder why there's bits of glue everywhere. And the reason for that is to stop the connectors coming loose. And it's actually fairly resilient. I've been tossing it in and out the back of the car, and I've not had anything break on it yet. I did have a power supply go down about three weeks ago, and... The, the reality is these were really cheap PSUs. I think they were like 16 quid each. They really were not expensive. Model number wise, they are called S-150-24. So they're 24 to 30 volt PSUs and they have a variable voltage output that allow you to set it to about the 26.3 you want for the Inspire pack. And overall, that is it for this video. As you can see, I've got it currently fully loaded with two Crystal Sky packs as well that are charging. So for me, it's just a nice, small, portable charger that allows me to get everything done out and about, and it allows me to just put it in the back of the car and not have to worry about chucking in cables and charge things and things like that. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you might have learned something from it. Please do subscribe to the channel, and I'll do another video again soon.